Why does this look like my airport case? Um, because why are men so clueless? Like, what does it take to make a girl? <laughs> Who's gonna tell them? I am going to tell them. Even though we're a country of over a billion people, we must pretend we don't have. Why, bro? Like, joyful is one of the best, most amazing pleasures that life has to offer. Can you explain bohemian parents? Like, what does that mean? I have a company that makes toys and lubricants. I don't have to hide any of this from my parents because I think it would be horrible to have to fight a battle in your own home to do your work. Do you know what I mean? I don't think a kid growing up in the 90s in India thought like, I'm going to be a sex educator. Like, where were the templates for that? So any three tips you can give our viewers? anyone who's trying to start their own business. On the occasion of World Sexual Health Day, we have Lisa Mangaldas, who is a leading sexual wellness educator and the founder of Lizu's, a pleasure tech venture. In this episode, we will explore how Lisa started the conversation around sexual wellness in India and how is this industry on its way to becoming a billion dollar empire. Stay tuned as we break down her strategies and learn how she made some smart financial decisions. I remember the first time I saw anyone talk about or so openly on the internet was you. Ah, oh, thank you. So when I saw that for the first time, I remember my first reaction being like, how are like are people going to be okay that now that they know that she spoke about this? Like if I speak about this, maybe a potential boyfriend might have a problem or my best friend might judge me. I don't really have to do this, you know. So did you face something like this? Um, I was lucky not in my immediate household at all. Um, in fact, I think it was more taboo to talk about money than sex <laughs> in my house. <laughs> um, it was like, you know, in bad taste or crass to talk about how much money you make or in general, I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, definitely more awkward around talking about money than sex. And I think that's like, I'm glad I'm 34. You know, I think if I was 16 and on the internet, I think the type of feedback you get all the time, all the time, whether it's love or hate or whatever, can hit you much harder. Like I think at 34, you've developed a sense of self that's a bit more um, resilient than that that you might have as a teenager or a very young 20 year old. You know what I mean? Now that you spoke about family, what I hear is you were born in Bangalore. You moved to Goa after that. I just want you to walk me through that journey and also talk about your relationship with money in those early days? I was, yeah, born in Bangalore, too small really to remember Bangalore very well, although I, I do have a fond place in my heart for, for Bangalore. But I was five when we moved to Goa. My parents were very bohemian. That's what drew them to Goa back in the 90s, a place as it's become now for people to move to. Can you explain to. bohemian parents? Like, what does that mean? Um, They're quite unconventional. I feel like I grew up um, chilled out, uh, sort of home life in that regard, where my parents never placed expectations or rules on us with regard to what we could imagine our futures could look like, if that makes sense, um, or how we could express ourselves. So we also have a very high degree of honesty in our families where I never have to pretend to be one way in front of my parents and be something else in front of my friends or whatever else, right? Like it would be much harder to do this work. Today I am talking about on the internet every day. Mm -hmm. I have a company that makes toys and lubricants. I don't have to hide any of this from my parents. They, they're the first people to see our toy. You know what I mean? It's great that this is chilled out for me because I think it would be horrible to have to fight a battle in your own home to do your work. And any money lessons they would give you while growing up or did they have some kind of rules around money? Money in our household was never something that was considered a core motivation. Uh, like my parents, my dad is an architect. Um, my mom was a fashion photographer and then an interior designer. But back in the day when fashion photography wasn't even a thing here. So she was, you know, they were both creative professionals doing things. Um, and, and they also, they started a lifestyle store, like a concept store in the 90s in Goa. It was quite a pioneering thing to do at the time. And they were always doing things just in unique ways, things that just seemed impossible, like inventing cre careers in a way, you know? Like, and I think to some extent that is why I do what I do as well. Like, I didn't grow up thinking I could be a educator. Do you know what I mean? I don't think a kid growing up in the 90s in India thought like, I'm going to be a educator. Like, where were the templates for that? Or like, I'm going to have this vibrator brand. Do you know what I mean? It just, I was able to invent that for myself, I feel, because my dreams were not closed off. Like, imagine, imagine stuff that you want to do and make it happen was something I was encouraged to do from a young age, as opposed to being like, you can only do what's already been done. Now that you told me that, you know, it was a very unconventional 
parenting. So can you walk me through your education? What did you study when you were growing up? I was, uh, yeah, super, super, super nerdy, worked really hard and it paid off because I got a scholarship to go to Columbia. And I'm double majored in literature and visual art with a focus on gender and sexuality. Very interesting to me so also. Is that where your interest started when it comes to sexual education? Yeah, I think also with sexual education, I was, a, I was an RA while in college. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we had to do in the first week of the new students joining was a consent workshop, you know, um, be m- mindful of each other's consent. So many people are going to have f- for the first time in college, right? To witness the power of peer to peer conversations around this stuff, where instead of being afraid or awkward, because you're like almost the same age and know that you're not being judged people would be super receptive to this you know people would take those condoms people would ask questions in the consent uh, conversation or whatever so after columbia did you study further or was that no i didn't i then moved back to india Um, so then you jumped into the work then i jumped into the work so what was your first job what was your first salary if you could walk us through that after graduation i moved to india and my first job was with et now so mm-hmm. I ended up learning a little bit unwittingly about the stock market. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, at the editor of ET Now at the time, was a really, really wonderful guy. He told me that you do not need to take a job, be a consultant. You'll get paid better. And I really appreciate that advice because it's tempting at that age to just take a job. I was then um, also able to work with other TV channels as an anchor in production. I learned a lot of the aspects of television, journalism. I learned a bit of everything before they put me in front of the camera. How to use a Bloomberg terminal. I opened a DMAT account. Like all of this stuff that I perhaps would not have learned otherwise was actually really very valuable. Can you give me a ballpark figure like per project how much you were earning around that time? I think when I was like 21, I was making maybe like 10,000 rupees a day or something. Then it became 15,000, 20,000, 25,000, 30,000. You know what I mean? Per shoot. Per day. Per Per shoot day. So tell me, how are you handling your money right now? Like, are you investing somewhere, mutual funds or anywhere? Yeah, sure. I um, actually primarily have equity uh, investments. And I think that because I started saving quite young I had like some basic saving plans when I just started but as I told you I was working with ET now and kind of like you know learned what a DMAT account is or that one can um, buy stocks so I think it was great to have that information because my parents didn't teach me that at all I was just I just happened to get this ET now job and learn some of that my brother then became very interested in the stock market and investments and um, my equation with my brother on that front we discuss money as well I, mean, I imagine yeah. that's something you also yeah, I can relate to you can that. relate to yeah. that so I and I think because both of us are like I guess 34 is young I don't know man is it young sometimes it is please. but um, <laughs> <clears throat> I think my appetite for risk is so like kind of high hmm. um, so I've gone all in on, on direct equity, stocks or on direct stocks okay anything else other than direct stocks well, I have some mutual funds and some fixed deposits, but I would say that's negligible. Do you want a house anywhere? I'm like a huge fan of of renting, um, what's the word, time, sh- I don't know, like not owning stuff. Buy real estate as an asset or and then live in a shitty place. You know what I mean? I kind of value quality of life over asset accrual at this point. That might change if I had kids who were dependent on me, you know? Yeah, so far it's not been a priority. So from anchoring, how did you venture into being a content creator, speaking about How did that happen? <clears throat> I think traditional media was just a stand-in for what I've ended up doing on social media now. But it was so such a like uninspired landscape. I quickly realized that English television in India is like a dead, it's like a, you're flogging a dead horse. Who is watching this, firstly? Secondly, it's so boring. Like, honestly, television is boring, man. That's why nobody watches TV. And I feel like the amount of rules, and sadly, the internet's becoming like that now. Just rules, rules. You can't say this. You can be like, where's there a good show about, like, duality on Indian television there wasn't one now in a funny kind of way television is getting the pressure to be cool to stay relevant and social media is becoming uncleish because there's you know what I mean there's just too many people on there so now we need rules so um yeah so I kind of did the started a YouTube channel alongside a few years in when YouTube suddenly there was like Which Instagram was, was not even photo was not even video sharing 2017 is when I started YouTube 
So why, when did you realize like this is what I want to talk about and there is an audience for this like then why did you go all in for that topic I was just as a young person navigating my own sexual health my own relationships um I was so often just deeply frustrated why is it so embarrassing to buy condoms why is the guy not asking me whether I'm married as the first question when I enter the office what if I never want to get married dude like why can't we talk about what I'm here for you know what I mean without guilting me about the fact that I'm to be active despite being unmarried or why are men so clueless like what what does it take to make a girl <laughs> who's going to tell them <laughs> i am going to tell them you know so it was like it came from a place of, and also like why are there no con- culturally contextualized resources you only see white people talking about this stuff or even in movies and things it's like it, we until recently like there were no kissing scenes even in a bollywood movie we pretended even though we are a country of over a billion people the largest population in the world we must pretend we don't have Why bro like joyful sex is one of the best most amazing pleasures and and discoveries that life has to offer and yet we do not talk about it so i feel like there was lots of uh, moments where it became clear that the internet can play a big role in this this is where people go to talk about the subject because you can't talk about it at home any any shocking customer insights that you can give us like who are which gender is purchasing more so I what was, are the age groups like do you have Anything See, we don't us? market to anyone below twenty-one because they're adult products. Um, so the age group is definitely like twenty-one plus, and I would say twenty-one to forty-five is like your quite a wide age group. Do you see a lot of men purchasing? Yeah, lots of men are purchasing the men's products. I think we it's easier also for single men to buy product than single women. Of course, women are also purchasing the products, but I would say that by and large, just like men. if you buy condoms if you're in a relationship the expectation is the guy should go buy the guy should buy the sexual products even if the user is going to ultimately also be a woman i think there's less consequences if found out if it's the guy who made the purchase right unfortunately we still have to hide these things like people care a lot about discreet packaging and i think it eases the process of talking about this stuff also like many couples oh i love love bug it's also it's one of it's our latest why launch. does this look like my airport case um because i told you what? the indian customer needs discretion so we wanted to make a toy that you don't have to hide you just oh. pop it up yeah I think you yeah. made a reel with this, right? Yes, I made. Was that several. was that awkward being in the flight and showing uh, this? Like, how did that no, feel? No, because look at the toy. Like, who would know? No one's True. gonna know. True. It literally. I looks think that like, would have been. Yeah, imagine little... I was on the flight being like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would do it. Yeah, okay, and, but and what do you think is the future of this industry in general, all over the world? Uh, in India, I think currently uh, there was a. a uh, report that came out i think in 2020 by allied market research that estimated the size of the industry at around a billion over a billion usd in india in 2020 projected to reach over 2 billion by 2030 there's a really big audience for it uh, globally and you're seeing already in uh, other countries the like the availability of this you can get uh, toys today at places like sephora target you know selfridges like from the high end to the low end just mainstream instead of having its shady like separate you know separate kind of like underground store with some dark lighting like it's just out there in the supermarkets and the makeup stores and the grocery stores and even in india today they're available now in some pharmacies there are they are the, yes the oh. we, we call them massages sorry massages <laughs> in the okay. pharmacy okay so any three tips you can give our viewers anyone who's trying to start their own business believe in yourself like i think at 34 i'm much more confident and able to see it than i was at 20 but even now i need to be reminded in, in general i think women are socialized to some extent to minimize themselves like to make yourself small you know sit with your legs crossed don't talk too loudly understate your achievements under like you're always supposed to be humble and pleasant and you know downplay downplay how capable you are downplay how smart you are downplay how you are like downplay 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 and men are encouraged to upplay okay men it's, a, it's it's also like not a great thing to have that pressure either but i think there's a pressure on men to constantly exaggerate and i think that yeah that any that a woman starting a business should believe in herself recognize your worth negotiate ask for more no one's going to just hand over more to you you got to ask for the raise or the you know whatever it is so <clears throat> yeah i think like knowing your worth being confident of your worth i think is so lisa thank you so much i'm sure the viewers have learned a lot i learned a lot especially about toys and um, 
Thank you guys uh, for tuning in. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and comment down below what you think about this episode and I'll see you in the next one.